All right. I think we are all set. Pick up my hands. Yep, you're gonna need those. All right. Okay. All right. Welcome. I think we are ready to go. Yeah. Here, yeah, virtual handshake. <laughs> nice to meet you, Craig. Nice so to welcome to view. Um, I'll, I'll explain a little bit wh where we are standing right here. This is um, a, a test sector of the city we're building. So pretty mm -hmm. much, uh, we're starting to um, build the first planet of the universe, and on on that first planet, we're building the first city. Yeah. And this is the and this is the um, just a scale mock-up test for the for a one little quarter inside the city. So the city is going to be pretty huge. Okay. Um, and uh, so what we're doing here, so nothing, I mean, the way that things look like these three and stuff, that is absolutely not how the final city is going to look. This is more a, a test of a scale. So we know, okay, this, feel, this feels like a right size of roads and things like that, right? Okay, um, cool. But um, soon we will jump through that portal there, and that portal takes us uh, outside of the city, like somewhere on a different point on the planet, uh, a point we call a Retro Canyon. Uh -huh. And... Um, and that is that is a much closer to like release level quality. So you will you will have a better idea of uh, you know the the amount of uh, I mean the the, the the quality of immersion that we're trying to create in this world here. Because that's for us is really important. We we want to create a world that feels believable, that feels like you're really in another place. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the idea is to create. Uh, so we're we're on planet number one in city number one. So we will create this big sprawling city where 80% of the city will get built by the users themselves and 20% cool. gets built by us. So so pretty much the entire universe is connected to a, a very epic, long, five-year long storyline. Um, so everything that is pertinent to the storyline gets built by us, but the rest of the universe gets built by the players. Very cool. Right? So first what we're going to do is we're going to just jump out to another point on the planet and uh -huh. then we're going to jump in there and I'll show you um, how players can actually create the world themselves. Okay, very cool. Okay, so walking, you probably, it looks yeah, like you're using the touchpad. Yeah, touchpad, so you just, you know, rotate your body in real life, it's like the onward system. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to go faster, then just hit uh, on your main hand, hit one of the buttons, uh, or the menu button on the Vive, I believe, and that will summon the hover disk. Ooh. Yeah, and then uh, it does, and that works the exact same way of walking, just faster. Really? So All right. You said that's the uh, it's the, the menu button, the, the one above the touchpad. Yes. Uh, that's not popping it up. Yeah. Okay. Can you pull the trigger? Can, oh, there ah. Go. Okay. Grip buttons on the Vive. Ah, it's a grip button. Oh, weird. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So. So try that, but it's working oh, the same cool. way. And the same button again to to go back to walking mode. Yeah. <laughs> that was like bumper cars. <laughs> That's pretty freaking cool. <laughs> Never actually got to ride on one of those segways. I feel like this is gonna be what it's like. Yep, that's that's pretty much the uh, idea behind it. So it's uh, it's a cool. natural way of moving. If you got your VR legs, then it's no problem. If you're completely new to VR, then you should probably stick to walking at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, and then just squeeze the grips and there it goes. Alright, cool. Yeah, okay, so I'll go to this portal here. Uh, you will automatically come with me because we're in a team. Sure. Ooh, there we go. That is crazy. Everything's all... That's cool looking. And here we go. So welcome on planet number one, oh, wow, which is cool. uh, inspired by the Grand Canyon slash desert style. So it's uh, arid. You see, you know, recognizable animals and things like that. Um, ah. There's a reason for that. We wanted for planet one. We want we wanted to stay close to something that people uh, know because it's easier to like you know get people immersed if they see things that they already know, like a rabbit or a bird. If you would put them in like alien planet with weird stuff, it's just a lot harder to get that you know that feeling of um, presence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for this world, we decided to start with something like this. Um, so yeah, feel free, free to explore, and if you have any questions, um, you can go over the water with the hover disk. Oh really? Oh man, that's a weird feeling. <laughs> it's like your brain's telling you this shouldn't happen, but. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Whoa. 
So all animals you see in this world, they are all driven by their own little brains. So oh, nothing yeah. is scripted, and that's really important to to, to really m create a, a feeling that this world is real. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, these birds are. Flying around so you know, when they when they are hungry, they go looking for food. Um, if there is no food in this area, they will move to another zone. Oh, that's um, cool. Things like that. Uh, also, when it gets dark, because they have eyes, they can see. So when it gets dark, they go looking for a place to sleep, and they go to sleep. So when you come here, when you would arrive here at night time, you won't see any birds flying around. Oh, very cool. But then you will hear a lot of uh, bats and or other insects. Really? That's pretty cool. So how many people are going to be able to connect to uh, one of the uh, servers? Oh. It's too early to put a number on that, but yeah. the, the goal the goal is to have something that is more like a MMORPG, like World of Warcraft, yeah. uh, and and less than something like hey, four people can do this. You know, it has to be uh, a very large chunk of people should be able to, to do this. Okay, yeah, it's got a, some rabbits over here and a lizard. Yeah, is he gonna bite me? No, I just it's, I think he will only, only hiss a little bit. The uh, lizards yeah. are, are still pretty dumb. That we need to. We need to uh, add a lot of work to their uh, AI. Right, so that returns us back to the main area. Yes. So while exploring this uh, the wilderness, like the surface of a planet outside of the city, oh yeah, one more thing. Inside yeah. the city, it's, it's always safe, right? And so casual users, most of the time, they will spend inside the city because there is no danger there. Mm -hmm. But if you mm -hmm. if you go outside of the city, there is always an element of danger. Yeah. Um, but so there is. But you want to explore things, and, and while you explore, you can encounter things that we call micro-stories. Which is, you know, something might trigger an event around you, so mm -hmm. you, you feel like something is happening, and you can participate in the, in the event, or there is something that can be done. Uh, like over here, this is a, a, a micro-story where it's uh, about, uh, you know, together with, with your friend here, chopping some wood, starting a campfire. Yeah. And just chilling at the campfire, watching the, the shooting stars at night, or um, and other things that that uh, will be able to be done here is if you have the resources, you could make uh, together. You maybe craft a um, like a raft together, you know, and then you continue on your journey and you explore more uh, towards the uh, other uh, other part of the river. Oh, so these cool. things are possible. Um, so yeah, let's let's just make something here. I'll grab this piece of log. Uh, behind you there, you see the axe there in the, in the tree behind you? Yeah. You can grab that. Oh. Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah. Alright. So, so, just like in real life, if you would, for example, if you would chop it like this, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you chop it too light, it's not going to work. This is not, like in other games, it would be like, press A to... to uh, to chop wood, right? Yeah. Here you actually need to do it the way you think it should be done. All right. So you, uh, good. Oh, oh, there we go. Ha ha. Okay. That's pretty cool. Well, we, we need quarters. So one more time. Need quarters. All right. Let's see if we can. Stack oh, you stack. Oh man. There we go. There nice. we go. So, I oh, that was a little. If we throw uh, three pieces on there, yeah, nice. Oh, snap. <laughs> oh, dang, you got an arm <laughs> on that one. There we go. And the same with this thing, and this is not like press X to start a campfire. Oh, for this instance, is the fire yeah. And, and you need to. Act. Oh, but if you, do, if you do this, that doesn't work, you know. Yeah. If you do this, doesn't work. You need to actually, and also it has to be aimed. You you know you, you it doesn't. If I do it like that, it's not gonna work. You yeah. need to actually aim the sparks. Get it up close to it. Oh, that's pretty go. cool. I'm a uh, I've been oh. a Boy Scout for many many years. I've worked <laughs> out at a summer camp for the last uh, 17, so I've taught many people how to do the <laughs> flint and steel. Starting awesome. fires. That's pretty cool. Oh, you see that uh, flashlight there on the chair behind you? Yeah. If you grab that, we're gonna need that because I'm gonna change it to nighttime here. Oh, okay. All right. So.
so normally if you spend enough time outside the world will automatically advance you know you will see slowly the sun go down and it uh -huh. will get night time but for the demo here I, I created this pylon um, so the team worked on this so we can quickly uh, jump to another time of day so I'll, I'll turn it into night time oh oh dang that is uh rather oh. dark do you still have the flashlight yeah yeah let's click it on with your thumb there we go oh my gosh <laughs> camera creepy camera man <laughs> man that is crazy dark but we got our campfire going over here though yeah wow that Thank is God. that is really dark that's pretty cool also, you, see, you you know the whole audio landscape changed. Uh huh. Yeah. And that yeah, is, hear the that is because because all the animals have they they know it's dark now. So all the nighttime um, insects came alive. All the daytime insects went to sleep. All the you, you also notice all the birds are gone. Uh -huh. All the birds went to sleep. Got this one brave rabbit though. Yeah, this guy. He's still brave in the nighttime. Get, not giving up. Uh huh. Yeah, that's pretty cool though. Man, that is like super dark. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, there are no bears that will attack us here. Yeah, that's that is that is good. All right, let that me put it cool. more, make it morning here, so it's we can see something. Yeah. Sunrise. That's better. Yep, he got it. That's pretty cool. I like that. Man, that is some durable wood. Yeah, I think <laughs> it I think it burns about five minutes per log on it, so that would be fifteen minutes. Oh, okay, alright, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey buddy. Shh <laughs> sure enough birds. <laughs> we can feed them too, like I have I was like gonna say, well, yeah, well, what what is ah. This is test test food, so if I throw that let's see. Well, uh, I First guess of all, closer to them. They need to be hungry. Oh, the rabbit might go for it. Mm. Oh, there we go. Oh, the bird. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't move, or he's gonna. Not yet. They must have been That's hungry cool. because that was a lot of uh, hungry bird action. Yeah. Let's see if it swoops. Oh, looks like he's swooping in. That's pretty cool. You see? <laughs> he scared him off. Yeah. Scared That's pretty cool. I just uh, lifting my hands. Ah. Yeah, so they can detect mo movement too, so if and also noise. If you would shout, they, would, they should go away too. Ah. And they're also fish in the water as well, so th we can feed them too. So yes, yeah, I, mean, I mean, just you know, just imagine an entire planet full of all different fauna and flora, and they're all nothing is scripted. They all go around, you know, their own w life inside this virtual world, pretty much. Yeah, uh, I should have thrown. Yeah, if it's too if it's too shallow, they, they don't they don't want to do it. Let's see, let's see. Oh, I see one fish. Oh, yeah, there's one. He's going for oh, it. Yeah. He's, he's going for it. Oh, he's they're fighting. Oh. They're gonna... <laughs> oh, the little one got it. Ah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. This one doesn't probably too close to the shore. All right, let's go to the um, back to the city. Yeah, sure. Man, I can't wait till we have these in real life. Get out of here, on one of these. Oh yeah, one more thing. Sure. Like right now, do you feel like you're standing with me here in this canyon? Yeah, definitely. Think? Like it's yeah. just an amazing sense of of actually like being. Yeah. In so this canyon. I think. I think that is that is something we really spend a lot of time, you know, cracking that code because for me, you know, the magic sauce of virtual reality is when you can induce presence, when you people just feel, oh wow, I'm here now. Yeah. So so we started with that and once we, we realized okay we achieved that, that's when we only started building on top of the world. You know, oh, we yeah. could have made a we could have made a world that looks like a second life that is huge, but not a single part of that world feels like this is believably a real world. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's crazy how like 
when I'm playing shooters and stuff with my buddies in on like a flat screen, you know, kind of thing, I never look at them when I'm talking. But in VR, like, it's just that yeah. instinct to to when I'm talking to, to actually like turn and, and and look at you. So it's like it's just something that you just you can't that, get that outside of VR. Exactly, that's the power of VR. Whoa, <laughs> this guy. that's the beauty. Ah. Hey. What's up, bird? This bird. Hey. Wow. That's amazing. Skedaddle. Well, that's that's a very good way of getting close. Even normally, you never see them this close. Yeah. You see, it's cleaning his wings. Oh no, yeah. golden. I don't know. That guy was. I mean, uh, here is another thing. They're also randomized, right? So some birds have lesser fear of humans than others. Huh. That must that must have been a very fearless one. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's pretty cool. That is something. All right, back in the city. Uh. Okay, so now imagine that this is the uh, the real city instead of this mock-up. Uh huh. Right, and, and you registered an account. You got some view tokens, and you bought like the penthouse apartment there on the top. Uh. Right. If you look through the window, you will see the entire city and all the all the people running through it through through the window of your place, right? Mm -hmm. Now inside your apartment, there is a, there is going to be different rooms, obviously, but there is going to be one special room which is the like a holodeck type room, right? And in yeah. that holodeck type room, you can run your own simulations, you can run your own little world. And the best way to describe it, imagine like um, you know those snow globes. Yeah, yeah. Imagine having your own little snow globe. Uh, mm -hmm. But you you created it and you have access to it by just walking through a door in your apartment. So you can invite your friends over and hey, let's go through this door and boom, you're going to be standing in your, your mini mini little world. Mm -hmm. So that's what we have right here. Yeah, I saw some of the buildings that were there have the for sale signs on top of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so the entire world is driven by cryptocurrencies, so in order to, to purchase um, real estate or purchase a plot of land, uh, let's, say, let's say you want to run a virtual business in the city, mm -hmm. right? That means first you're going to need to buy a, a virtual plot of land that is like uh, in the commercial zone, so you're going to need view tokens to purchase that plot of land. Then once you have that plot of land, then you can build, you can choose what kind of business you want to build on top of it. So let's say you want to build a... Um, ice cream store on it and mm -hmm. you want to sell ice cream to people and you want to charge like a very slow a low amount of ethereum for each ice cream you sell right yeah. so that, that will be totally possible for you um so the only difference is the 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 items that are unique like this plot of land is mine and th or this apartment building is mine mm -hmm. you those can will only be sold with view tokens okay cool so here we're standing, imagine you just inside your apartment, you walk through this, in, into the room of this holodeck, and now we're standing right here, mm -hmm. right? So what we do here, instead of giving the, the players the option to, to create an entire world from scratch, which is way too much work for most people, we create templates that already set a certain scene, a certain atmosphere, a certain mood. So you will be able to obviously to select different uh, uh, starting templates. But this is like a template where you where you start with a little little space on the edge of the rim of the canyon, and you can decorate it yourself. So th the way we decorate that is we're using oh. this um, island here. You can just rotate it around, oh, and yeah. then say, "Okay, I'm gonna I need a rock. Let's take this one." Uh oh, so, that's pretty so cool. It's fun and it's easy to do. Anyway, some shrubs next to it. Ha! So and a tree behind it that would be look nice, I think. So you know, so That's crazy. you you go outside of the city and you collect resources, and then those resources you can use to to populate your own little um, uh, template. Oh, did I just drop it? I don't know what happened. If it drops too close to the pylon, it's not going to register. Ah, okay. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Ah. And also, you can you can move it and resize it. Let's say we want we want this. Uh, ah. Ah uh, man, I'm, uh, I'm actually in my wall here. Let me reposition. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh wow. <laughs> and now you can uh, move it around. Move. Oh, that's pretty cool. 
So you know, in in a couple of in in a little little time, like remember those chairs we had there? You can have them too. Same with the animals. The animals they they come with their AI baked in, so you don't have to worry about that. You just if you catch an animal and you ah. let it loose in your world, it will come alive. It's like Pokemon almost. Just yeah. Throwing a ball out there and a rabbit spawns. Yeah, 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 yeah. Same with the sky too, so we oh. can change the oh. sunset. Whoa. That's just cool how fast that happens, man. Ha. So yeah, you know, so people will be able in a very fun way without needing to read manuals or anything, without needing to download a 2D editor and or, or start with Unity. You can quickly and uh, easily create your own worlds. Or you need to click with your thumb to uh, select an item. Yeah. Ah, okay, and then you go. can just move it around. Ah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> and then move your thumb up and down after you select it. Ah, yeah. okay, yeah. That's pretty cool. Ha! So the idea is that even casual users, you know, can uh, create something quickly that feels really immersive to them and is uh, customized to whatever they want. So if you want to, you turn this into a, like a cozy campfire overlooking a canyon, so you and your friends can just hang out in, in this environment that you created, that's, that will be entirely possible. Yeah. There we mm -hmm. go. At a campfire there. Ha! <laughs> that is so cool. It's like something out of a sci-fi movie. <laughs> yeah, that's very cool. Alright, that's the uh, end of the tour, that's as far as I can show you, we've been, we're working on many other places in this planet too, but this, th those are the two places that are like the most polished that we are ready to show off to people, but uh, hey. more, more stuff is coming uh, soon, and um, I think the next big milestone for us is the, uh, we're going to open up the registrations for the closed beta, mm -hmm. um, I think that is coming up next month. Very cool, yeah man, it's always, it's always crazy to see what people when when games just give people tools to be able to make what they want to make like the things they yeah. come up with that's just crazy yeah yeah I could definitely I mean every, I know like I mean Second Life was so hugely popular and that was just non VR so it's the idea of something that's that kind of experience in VR where you have that that sense of presence where you're actually like next to somebody and just like that's just that's that's a whole other ball game of VR man that's just crazy yeah, yeah, and and also like uh, you know this is going to be in beta for a while in early access. Mm -hmm. But what we're aiming to do is uh, the big release of the final product is going to coincide with the second generation of virtual reality okay, hardware yeah. coming out. So that's that's not for uh, anytime soon, but that's what we're aiming. Yeah, for. this is not going to be out in one month or something like that. This oh is, uh, no, 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 this absolutely. is going to be a, is a, a ways big, big off. Project, yeah. ah. Yes, absolutely. Well, man, All right. I look forward Thanks. to seeing what you guys uh, come up with over time. Like, Thanks, yes. man. It was a really fun time uh, touring you around here today. Definitely, definitely. And, uh, yeah, let's keep in touch. Definitely. All right. Well, it was a pleasure. Awesome, man. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talk to you later. Bye, Craig. Bye.